Hi. We're, We're the, the Wiggles. Wiggles. Blast off to the music universe. Beauty Bunny. Well, buddy, are you ready to wiggle today? I am. I was kind of uh, doing that off camera for this. <laughs> yeah, you, this has to be camera. one of the most fun, high energy interviews we've ever done. It is yeah. like everybody from the Wiggles. The core six were there. We had, or the core four plus Captain Feathersword plus Katarina, who's with the expanded group of the Wiggles for the Ready Steady Wiggle Show, and they're on tour and they're doing a. Uh, I would call it a limited run of North America, but there's plenty of dates, mostly in Canada. They just wrapped up their U.S. run uh, in New Jersey, New York, Boston, and now they're up in Canada. So they're still in North America. Then they go back to Australia because remember, the thing about Australia, buddy, is their summer is our winter. So they're right. here touring in the fall. It's harder to tour in the winter with a production like theirs. So they're going to mm -hmm. go back, tour Australia, and then hopefully 2024 we get some more Wiggles back here in the U.S. I've been covering them, gosh, since 2018 and interviewing yeah. them and watching their lineup changes. And, and just as somebody who thinks music needs to reach uh, all generations and all ages, it was really cool to see what they did during the pandemic uh, to get kids to wash their hands, social distance. And they had a song called Social Distancing. And it's kind of dystopian to, to watch a children's band in bright colored skivvies sing a song about keeping away from people, uh, you know, and they did a, a nice music video with it, but it was an important message. And I think, I think they're sort of seeing the results of what that music meant to families as they're touring, as they get back to touring this year. Yeah. I mean, um, they all were in studio together. You got to chat with them. I produced it. So you're not going to see me on camera, but I was laughing off, off, camera here uh just watching the interview unfold and a few different appearances by people it, really energetic so this is one you're going to want to watch so if you're streaming us somewhere and you're listening go find the video on our website or uh on youtube and watch this because you're going to have a lot of fun i did and i just behind the scenes for this one so i mean it, it, it was here great I, I really enjoyed it here are the wiggles what a treat we have for you today. I am here with like everybody from the Wiggles. This is so, so cool. We got, yes, yes, yes. We've got Sahai Hawkins, Simon Price, Lockie Gillespie, of course, the OG Anthony Field. And I'm surprised to have Captain Feathersword here. And of course, new Wiggle, Katarina Meat. This is awesome. How is everybody today? Excellent. Oh, great, mate. Right. Yeah, exactly. could be better. No, Never awesome. a bad day on Wheel Town. <laughs> I love it. I love it. How does it feel to be back in North America? It's incredible, especially after the uh, the COVID, after the pandemic. Uh, performers all around the world just wanted to get back out there and do what they do best, which is singing and entertaining their audience. And our audience is so incredibly brilliant. Families, children have never seen a show before. It's their first show. We give them the best show we possibly can, and we're even more excited than usual uh, to be back out there. I love it. And Sahai, you joined the Wiggles as uh, and took on the Yellow Skivvy during all of this COVID craziness. How does it feel to be on your first trek across North America? Oh, it's absolutely amazing. I love meeting all the families. Um, the audience here are super hype and energetic, and it makes it so much fun to perform and meet them all. So I'm having the best time. <laughs> and Katarina, same question to you. Uh, now, uh, as the second person to wear the red skivvy in this new expanded troop of eight, how does it feel to be touring uh, here in the States? Oh, we're so lucky to be here. Um, like Sahai said, the audience are fantastic. They give us so much energy. Um, they're very loud and enthusiastic, and that makes us even more happier and enthusiastic than we normally are. So it's great. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is uh, this is awesome. So, of course, Ready Steady Wiggle is on Netflix, uh, and you guys filmed that with uh, the uh, during COVID. How did that how how did that come about, and how was production during all of that craziness in Australia? Yeah, we we have our own studio in Australia, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if you were going to um, work, uh, you could do it. You could do and just we had bare 
minimum staff. Captain Feathersword was operating a camera, uh, which was unbelievable. He took the eye patch off and everything was in focus. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it really was. And, and um, Simon, you were operating the, the boom mic. Yeah, because I'm the tallest, so that, that kind of kept out of Captain's shot quite easily. That's great. In fact, Captain Feathersword, I'm curious, during all that time off the road, did you learn any new uh, impressions for your magic buttons? Oh, uh, well, uh, I'm not sure. Where, but should we find out? Yes, please. Uh, what about, um, let's try a little bit of Mick Jagger. Hey, yeah, you stop me. Oh, yeah. Sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> what about Lady Gaga? Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> How about Cher? <laughs> If I could turn back down. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. I love it. I love it. Oh my gosh. This is this is fantastic. Um I really, really great to have you back. Um you just finished up, I think, in New York, the Upper East Coast. Now you're in Canada. Um any chance that the tour will expand beyond this, or are you headed back to Australia after after the last uh after the last date yeah we, we we go back home we've got a, a nationwide tour of australia pretty soon after we get back uh it's always a, a quick trip or we'll be sad to leave but uh yeah we look we're this is just the start we've got all all around canada to do as well um, i love it i love it now um everybody here knows the power of social media and one of the things i do i will admit it i follow every single one of you on TikTok. Anthony, you have become a viral TikTok sensation. Whoa. The wiggle. <laughs> oh no, it hasn't been me, mate. It's Johnny. Uh, Johnny, come over here. John's the John's the TikTok king. I know. I, I, I know. I, I have honestly. I don't even. I get on it, and I, I still don't know what I'm doing. But I don't come even on. know my password. There he is. <laughs> there he is. Recognize me with my skibby on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> have you seen John, Matt? Yes, I can see John. Hi, John. Yes, yeah. you you I, are very integral in the Wiggles TikTok. And yes, it's John, but it's all of you. You all do such fun, creative stuff. I mean, talk about, uh, and John, if you're still there, you can chime in here too. Talk about digging into social media over the last couple of years, because I think the follower base is just incredible. It's parents of fans, fans from of my generation that know the OGs. It's just been really incredible to watch you guys on social media. Well, yeah, I think the TikTok is... Uh... Uh, they're the audience that grew up with the Wiggles, and now they're in their twenties, uh, early, late teens, twenties, thirties. Yeah. Uh, so they're having a lot of fun, and because it is TikTok, we, we're not aiming it at the four-year-olds or the five-year-olds, right? Uh, which we do on, on YouTube, and of course on Ready Steady Wiggle Five. But when it's TikTok, we know it's a little bit older. We can have a bit more fun, and that's why Johnny does. Incredible things like he's about to show you right now. Like I just become myself and look, one, two, three, boom. Yep. <laughs> yes. Yes. You, you had an entire radio station in New York in a tizzy because you took off the 40th anniversary skivvy and threw it out. I, that's hysterical. It's, it's, really, it's really cool. It's, that's wonderful. Yeah, that's, gone, that's gone crazy, Matt. That skivvy moment, but we didn't know because it was radio. You don't know that there's cameras <laughs> yeah, there as well. Yeah. So Johnny's taking his shirt yeah, off, yeah. and he's got, you know, he's, he's, he's a well muscled young yeah. gentleman, yeah. and <laughs> it goes crazy. Two, three million people have viewed, viewed it. Days, it's crazy. It's, it's and at awesome. the time I had two on front tooth knocked out. Yeah, and so I was like, we had. Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. I want to talk about the skivvies for a second because, Anthony, the last time we talked about it, we talked, we didn't get to dig into this. And, again, I'm an OG fan, so this is this is just from my own curiosity. What goes into the decision to redesign the skivvies every, every couple of years, every iteration? I love when you guys come out with new ones. And uh, how, what's that process like creatively? Well, originally we had uh, uh, just cotton skivvies and uh, we used to sweat so much. Uh, and one time one of the audience members yelled out, Murray's melting. <laughs> and, and, that, and so we thought we better get a uh, skivvy made of the material that the football teams use, which you don't see the sweat. So 
we had a change uh, of skivvy uh, when the OGs left and when uh, when young Lockie and Simon and Emma and myself, we got these. And these are like uh, Australian rugby league with the oh, V. Cool. It's called an NRL V. And, um, well, they're just fun. But I got a sparkly skivvy for Ready, Steady, Wiggle 5. And that was because, and I'll be honest, I put on a lot of weight. And <laughs> it's true, right? You wanted to distract. I wanted to distract. <laughs> it's true. Right? I'm, not, I'm not making that up. Uh, but I've shed a few kilos now. But who knows? Do you think we should design a new one? Sahai's got the flares. Oh, have a look at Sahai's flares. Uh, flares. Oh, I love that. I love that. And, uh, I'll be getting a sparkly skippy soon. <laughs> <laughs> right, <I> so... <laughs> Simon and Lockie, I want to talk to you because one of the things I loved, I hate to keep going back to three years ago, but we haven't talked in such a long time. And it was very impactful for me to follow is you really got families and children of a certain age through the uncertainty of COVID. And you were a part of that with the songs and, and the things that you guys were putting out. If either Simon, Lockie, whoever wants to hop in, talk about the feedback that you received from the families when you when you put out those COVID songs, yeah, well, I mean, I think it was such a challenging and difficult time for everyone, and a really hard concept for a child to understand that all of a sudden I can't see my my grandparent, I can't see a relative, I can't go and see my friends. So, for us, we wanted to try to tap into that message to help children cope with um, with these, these changes that were happening, which were really hard, really hard for an adult to comprehend, let alone for a child to go, well, mm -hmm. I, I can't actually hang out with my friends anymore. So that was really what we were trying to achieve and to keep families and, and friends and everyone close together and give, it, give children that sort of understanding, which, uh, it's, you know, the response we got seemed to work and, and, and seemed to help. That's wonderful. And Katerina, I want to talk to you about the process when Anthony approached you and said, hey, come come on a skivvy and, and be with us and we're going to expand it to eight. What was that conversation like and, and uh, what was going through your head? Oh, I was very excited that uh, I was going to be a part of the Wiggles. I've been here for 20 years as a dancer, choreographer and a friend of Dorothy the Dinosaur. So it was so special to be offered to be a part of this iconic group. Um, and like I was here when the OGs were around, so I've seen them back I love back it. in the day. We were doing Madison Square Garden and doing all these amazing shows. So now to be a part of it is it's surreal, but it's wonderful. I, I got it. Twenty years, Katerina. You don't even look twenty. Come on. I, st yeah. I started when I was a baby. Yeah, she does. <laughs> and Anthony, your uh, your daughter's a part of it now too, correct? She is. She, she's just coming over to say hello. And um, it's been really great uh, being on tour with, with Lucia. Uh, there she is. Hi. <laughs> what do you think about being in the Wiggles, Lucia? I'm, I'm, I'm taking Matt's job for one second. <laughs> um, I love it. I think it's definitely a part of um, how I grew up and now I'm part of the family as a Wiggle. And it's um, very different to being a dancer. I've been a dancer all my life, but um, I wouldn't change it for the world and – Yes. Awesome. Yeah, mind. <laughs> awesome. Well, Anthony, I want to switch gears with you for just a second and talk two quick points about the OGs. Number one, the OG tours, the 18 and above tours, which all of you have roles on, I believe I've seen in video clips. They are just crazy fun. It looks like you go into a venue in Australia, do a, a current lineup show during the day for the kids, and then you come out and you do the OG lineups at night. And it's like... It's like you're, you're rock stars with all these adults. It's amazing. Oh, mate, it's been the best. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, the, the original Wiggles get together at night time. Uh, the Wiggles, these Wiggles, we play in the daytime, as you said, Matt, I'm sorry. But but it, it's just, um, it must be said that there's different uh, restrictions and less restrictions on the crowd coming in who right. are over 18. They're not drinking, uh, you know, soda pops <laughs> yeah <laughs> and they relive their youth uh and we have the best time we keep the show exactly as we yes as we did it but the crowd they're having the best time ever patty oh captain what do you think <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah. It, it, it actually um it, 
I, I didn't think the concept would work initially, be doing exactly the same show, but it did. That's all they wanted to see. In fact, they did half the show. We could stop <laughs> singing at any point and they would just continue. They knew every word of every song. It was absolutely fantastic. A great yeah. buzz. That's really, really cool. And there's a documentary coming out on Amazon called Hot Potato, of course. Um, I'm going to have Buddy, who's our producer, I'm not putting it up now, but he will put up a, a poster and edit. We were talking earlier about the skivvies and, and how you guys design things. That is the coolest cover art for a band documentary I've ever seen. I cannot wait to see Hot Potato. Oh, mate, it's it's a really uh, – it's it goes right way back to the start. Um, and, you know, like any bunch of people who've been together for 32, 33 years, there's tears, there's laughter, there's joy, there's sadness – there's breakups, there's comes together. It's it's just, it's life, really. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, you know, we've come out the other end and here we are. And the guys, we're really happy. And and, um, and I think going to that documentary or watching it, uh, people will see uh, a side of the Wiggles never, never seen before. I love it. Uh, and I have to say, I love that you are a band, forgive me as I search for the words here, that yes, you're children's entertainers, but you acknowledge the fans over the past 30, 40 years, and, and you're not afraid to meet them on their level with the TikTok, with the OG shows, with, with everything, with this documentary now showing a vulnerable side. I mean, talk about the decision to, over the course of these last few years, let people in to sort of see how the fruit salad gets made, if you will. And well, yes. do, you know, do you know what, Matt? If from day one, we've broken that fourth wall. Like we've always been interactive. We spoke to the children. Now they're adults, you know, but of course we still speak to the preschoolers. That's how, of that's how much, but, but, um, you know, recently we played, we played the States and we didn't do a Henry the Octopus song. We didn't do a Wags the Dog song or a Captain Feathersword song. And we got, we got, um, uh, complaints and posters put up online <laughs> Equal rights for Captain Feather Sword, Wags, <laughs> and Henry. And do you know what? They were right. And I wrote to the people who wrote it. I said, mate, so the next show we did, which was in uh, Boston, uh, Captain and Henry and Wags roughly got their own song. So I love that these days you can get uh, feedback, feedback uh, cons you know, interaction. It's, it's great. I love it. I love it. You guys brighten my day. Every time I get a chance to talk to you, you brighten everybody else's day you have been for generations now anthony before we i know we're gonna i want to close with a song because i see you have a guitar but i will give you the last question and that is what keeps you wiggling my friend well i i, I genuinely love this uh the family we've got on the road uh we really do have the best audience now you think about it this is their first a lot of children's their first concert they've ever been to yeah. the excitement in the audience mum or dad taking their children or their child or, or mum, grandparents, they're all there. They're watching the show, but they're actually watching their children enjoy something. And I, there's never a boring day. Uh, the shows are always, we play live music. Um, these guys keep me laughing and I'm, hopefully I'll throw a few laughs their way too. <laughs> so, mate, it's just a great, best, best job I've ever had. Awesome. And coffee. And coffee. And coffee. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Captain, of course. All right. I, you know, I was going to request hot potato, but you know what? All six of you there, I'll make it dealer's choice. Let's close with a song, whatever you guys want to do. All right? What, oh, what, what, you, know, you, you name it, Matt. We'll sing what you say. Mm, gosh. Get ready to wiggle. Okay, oh. here we go. All right. Here we go. Oh, oh, by the way, get ready to wiggle was the song. I won't say it. Well, I will say it. No. Greg had his heart attack during Get Ready to Wiggle. Oh. Uh, it's a very, uh, uh, what do you call it? Energetic. energetic song. Yeah. Uh, and that's in the documentary. Uh, and we haven't played it since. So yes. just keep watching us. Make sure we're all right. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Captain's not looking too well. <laughs> Song. Ba -da -ba 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 -da. 
wiggles. Oh my gosh, keep wiggling for decades more to come. Anthony, Sahai, Simon, Lockie, Katarina, and Captain Feathersword, thank you so much. Touring the U.S. right now through the middle of October. Really, really, or I should say North America, through the middle of October. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Matt. We, we just want to say this to you. Beauty night. <laughs> you know, there's like, I think when you're a kid, there's just some neurosynapse that connects. And anytime you hear something from your childhood, you cannot help but, but join along. And I think I threw them for a loop with uh, Get Ready to Wiggle. And yeah. they brought up Greg's Heart Attack, which if people go to talkfor2.com, which is my solo podcast, uh, we I interviewed Greg all about uh, his cardiac arrest and the uh, his ensuing efforts to get defibrillators, AEDs they're called, uh, in more venues across Australia and his charity work with it. It's just, it was life changing for him. And so I actually talked with Greg Page uh, on my show, not necessarily too much about the Wiggles, um, but about uh, about what happened in the aftermath and his own project. So go ahead and check that out. I also have a solo interview with Anthony from years ago on there when they were first coming back when they were in the States in like 2018. And I went to cover the show. We did a, a pre-interview. So there's more Wiggles content. Also, my friend Kerry Stinson, uh, Purple Roads more wiggle stuff you can actually see the tour if you look up purple rose you can see a studio tour of the wiggle studio and it's it's really really cool so yeah. i've been working with the wiggles doing media stuff for for quite a while here so so, uh, so you're yeah. you're quite the wiggler yeah beauty <laughs> might well I don't know. is that cultural appropriation i don't know <laughs> I, I i don't know about any of that but uh you know speaking of childhood stuff and things that bring back uh memories uh, over the weekend uh finally had the kid watch the first two Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle films with me. And uh, I had, you know, grew up with them and uh, she, I don't know. I said, Hey, you, you want to watch it? So she, she finally did. And um, you know, so these shows transcend our generation and they do. to other generations. And, you know, Anthony even said it at the beginning of the interview, how many people, uh, you know, what their age group is now for those who um, yeah. uh, grew up with the Wiggles. And I think you're right in there, too. I'm sure they never thought 20 years ago that the group that knew the original group, the the kids that knew the original group, they would be so fervent to mm -hmm. to want them back and in, in a pub setting, in a, an arena rock setting. Because the thing about the Wiggles is... Because it was kids, and this is getting a little in the weeds here, but because it was kids, they would sell out the arena, but they wouldn't sell the whole arena. So they'd sell out what they would put on sale. And right. They wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't make a five-year-old sit in the three hundred section. They would sell the bowl, and and the floor, and and not everything else. Uh, Barney did the the same thing too. So so to be back there with a packed arena of adults. I mean, that's just next level. You can look up some of the videos on YouTube that they've posted. It's, it's, it's just really, it's really fun. It's really fun. Yeah. Well, it, it was a fun interview for sure. And uh, hopefully some, uh, everybody watching had a little fun with it as well. You know, it's always fun to bring that joy to people. It really is. All right. For the Music Universe podcast, I'm Matt. And I'm Buddy. Thanks for listening and watching. Be sure to check us out online at themusicuniverse.com and subscribe and follow and share at the Music Uni on socials and uh, subscribe at uh, tmupod.com. Take care. Mm -hmm.